Yeah, no, I'm not okay. So, after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Now, what do I present here? Let's see, I uh, heard two gunshots just after midnight. Uh, or, oh, crap. Or do I say, like, the pistol bears... Oh. Oh, fired three times? Uh, I guess this would make the most sense, because it says, I heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. Wait a sec, Larry! What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said! But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts! What? You only heard one gunshot? Are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How can you be not sure? Yeah, well... I, uh, may have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude! On my headphones! What?! Order, order! And stop that booing! Mr. Butts? You were listening to a radio on earphones? Yeah, so, so what? That's a crime! I listen to my radio, everyone listens to the radio, what's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Kama, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue to testify? Obviously. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who does not know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Bots. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave to me! I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. What Larry heard. It's lonely being... It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve! That's why I was listening to the all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it like real boom and loud like... But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. Do, 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 do. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. F very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. charade. Eh. Okay, so now we've got to question him. How lonely are you? So, you turned on the radio? Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. You don't know what it's like to be out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? Listen to it real boom and loud. 
real booming loud? <laughs> yeah, you know. And you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. I'm sure I heard the gunshot. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. No, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. What was he saying? What did he say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do to us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor! Of course we should! Why? Uh... Well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when you said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there's one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press him until we get that bot to get the bottom of what happened. <laughs> Saying, "Hey, it's almost Christmas." No, 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 no. no. Whoops. Let's see. Time of death sometime on twenty fourth or fifth. And we know. Okay, heard two gun sh two sh sounds like gunshots just after midnight, which would mean that it would be on Christmas Day. What's this DJ saying? Hey, it's almost Christmas, which means that would be before midnight. Objection! Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with that face? You look scary, dude! If you're trying to scare me, you'd better know I don't scare that easily! Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor? Did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed? And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve! That would seem to be the case, yes! But that contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man says it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor! Order, order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight? However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? What do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot? Larry's right. Larry is not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight! Intriguing. I am assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence. There was a gunshot before midnight. Where'd it go? Shows an empty lake taken automatically. Ha 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 ha! Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh yeah? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. 
It is why this photograph exists at all! What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set up to go set off set to go off in response to loud noises. Oh! Correct. There was a loud noise in the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that that is the case. Then, where does this, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It's a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two gut sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. The camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? <laughs> There's no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed triggering their camera. Objection! Oh. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man! Clear! Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Well, I believe the fact that the gun was fired three times is proof enough. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry just heard just before midnight. Order, order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen on that night on the lake. Exactly. If this was true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes before after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshot separated by 25 minutes. Ah! What, what, what's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right, I mean, is this safe? Safe? We're already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch me watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Alright, Nick! Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? <laughs> So, you finally realize the truth? There can be no other murder than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. <laughs> Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on the boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on the boat. I admit it's hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But that assumes the victim was shot 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp of the photo says 015. 
but Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way Ezra could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. The murderer and Hammond, Edgeworth and the murderer, Edgeworth and Hammond. Edgeworth and the murderer. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer! After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 1150, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Wha what? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place! I'm not sure what to make of all this. L Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? Bah, again you waste my time. I, I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats in the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? Maybe I su may I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not in a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. Okay, wait, hang on. Uh, yeah, like the boat rental shop, right? Or wait, that... Okay, who's... Okay, that's the hot dog stand. This is Lada's place. It had to have been here, right? Correct? The boat rental shop. If not, then it's that area up in the far right. Here, of course! The boat shop, where he lives! That way, he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop! Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gort Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure out this. Or figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. That, this was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put Rob on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Mist with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shot missed Miles Edgeworth? Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh Details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the... Um, tell us why the murderer had to fire twice to create a, min a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The 
murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone uh, who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and fires again. Then, the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat on the body, and threw the body into the lake. That is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Very well. While we're waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Doodly doodly doodly. Hey, Edgeworth, buddy! Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the. <coughs> that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to speak more clearly now. Okay. You heard what the defendant said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. <laughs> Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared! He isn't at the boat riddle shop either! What? What should I do? F find him quickly! We can't allow him to get away! Mr. Von Kama, your witness has disappeared! A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I can't declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Sweet. Pull it off. They came by our 27th. Hey, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? Thought there was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what was what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure. Once I sifted through his unique testimony, still, uh, still, he did save us. I just wish our cha uh, cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's, it's a trial, like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could turn your smile just a little. We're X. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. W w what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? 
No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is it about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Whoa, 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 what? What could be this nightmare of a crime that Edgeworth had supposedly committed? I suppose you'll have to tune in next time on the next action-packed adventure of, um, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, the final case of the original game when it was released. Uh, yeah. So the final day of investigation and trial will happen in the next session. So until then, I guess I'll see ya. Whoa. Hey there guys, if you like this video and you'd like to let me know, there should be a button down there that says like. Go ahead and give that a little click for me. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, then there should be a button down there that says subscribe. Go ahead and give that a little click too if you want. Well, that's about all I got to say. So, see ya. Call me. Call me.